We now have empirical evidence that drops of water talk to one another. When information and mental energy seem to generate systematic changes, then it is worthwhile to at least look closer, because this could be the measurable beginning of that which we all knew intuitively, that mind permeates matter, and that thoughts manifest themselves in material structuring much more extensively than we now think possible. This is the water lab of Professor Dr. Bernd Kroplin and Regine Zehenschel in Stuttgart, Germany. The aerospace researchers found out that water has a memory and stores information. They research over 18 years in their water lab, world in a drop. Now they are going to show you some of their results. After we have made droplets on our glass plate, and then the droplets dry, and they look like this, and you cannot see anything. And then if we take photographs with a dark field microscope of these droplets, then what do you expect? I have expected to see a chaos. But you don't see a chaos. Each drop looks like this. And because this have, has been water of the lake of Constance, so see on a nice picture from the droplets of the lake, lake of Constance. We call this the face of the water. So the lake Constance seems to have a face. And uh, not only the lake Constance has a face. See here a number of faces. Tap water from Stuttgart. Lake water from Berlin, Tibet water, holy water, tap water from Beijing, Gordon Glacier water. See, all these waters have different images, which we call different faces. And now the interesting question is, can we change these faces? Where do, where do they depend on? And are they are they iron for millions of years? No, they are living. So the water takes up information and these faces change and the water then memorizes what it has, has, has experienced during the life of its water. When we have put the flower into the water then we took drops out of the water and made drops on a, on a glass plate. And the drops dried and then we made photographs under the dark micro microscope. So and then you see a very astonishing thing. If we have a petunia flower inside, then the pictures, all pictures on this glass plate look like this picture here. And when you have a Sweet Williams flower inside the water, all the pictures look like this picture of the Sweet William image. So what does it mean? It means that the water has stored the information of the flower. And the information which is stored in the water was on the drop. And then if you take the photograph, then we see that the the water has built up a systematic structure. So all petunias flowers look like this, and all sweet William flowers look like this. And now the next is, can we even do this with stones? Many people like to drink water with some stones that are inlaid. And this stone is an amber stone. And here you see the picture from the amber stone after one day in water. And you see, the water has taken up the information of the amber stone. And if you drink it, then you put it to your body and it mixes with your body water and it changes the structure of the body water. So that's the secrets of water. The 
human body consists up to 70% or 80% of water. And uh, the interesting thing is this water has an internal structure and uh, it also can change the structure by an external impact. For example, if this lady would take a mobile and do mobile phoning for three minutes, then it could happen that her body water has changed in structure from this kind to this kind. You see, this kind is very much more rigid. For example, you can change your body water uh, every day when you hear music. For example, if uh, you have silence without music, then uh, you see the body water of an adder has this structure, which is the blood, the blood structure, and uh, the body water of Katharina has this structure. Both are very similar. Now, after 30 minutes without music, they go to 30 minutes of Eric Satie. This is a relaxing piano. And then the blood structure of an adder changes to this one, and the blood structure of Katharina changes to this one. You see, silence and Eric Satie mean a big difference in the structure of your blood. Then after another 30 minutes, they go to deep purple, religious rock, and you see, again, a big change between Eric Satie and the deep purple music in both cases. And finally, they tried OTEP, which is a heavy metal, hard rock, very aggressive, and then they get this structure of the blood. So basically, you see how sensible your body water and all your liquids in your body are. Not only this is true for blood, this is true for urine, we tried it also. Uh, this, is, uh, this is true for, for, all, for your lymph and all your body waters you have inside of you. One Sunday I sat in the water lab, did a lot of experiments and got hungry. In our kitchen I found a glass with sausages. I opened it and, how amazing, there was water in it to conserve the sausages. I named it sausage water and decided that it might be very interesting to look at it. And I observed some water droplets from the sausage water under the microscope. After I have eaten two sausages, I took a new syringe and new water from the sausage glass, made some droplets on the glass plate and looked at the droplets under the microscope. And what I saw was amazing. The first row is how the sausage water looks like before the experimenter, that was me, had eaten two sausages. The second row shows us how the sausage water looked like after the experimenter, me again, has eaten two sausages. You can see that the structure and the water droplets are more rigid, like crosses. What does this mean? The experimenter and what he or she is doing, in this case, has eaten, has a very strong impact on the structure of the water droplet. There is a communication between the experimenter and the water. The water reflects if the experimenter has eaten sausages or not. We have already seen that we can change the, the body water. Uh, by uh, eating something or by hearing music and this change will affect you and your, your life and your modes of feeling. Now the big question is, can we also use our brain and use our thoughts 
by changing uh, to change the body water. And uh, okay, let's give it a try. So I have two glasses of water, and what we did is we concentrate us very hardly, like in a prayer. We say uh, the water in the left glass should keep its original structure, and the water in the right glass should uh, have more structure in the center. So a centered structure. And then we take drops out of the water, and then we take photographs, and then we look at them. And then we see the left column. You see the tap water, three tap water photographs, and you see the center is empty. And on the right side you see a column, and all the three photographs, you see the center is structured. And what does this mean? This means that uh, we are able with our brain, with our thoughts, to make, change the structure in the water. Another interesting experiment for us was uh, to test whether our swords can be shielded by uh, a metal structure or a new metal structure which shields all electromagnetic waves. So uh, we test whether our thoughts are of electromagnetic nature or of another kind of wave. And for this uh, <coughs> we built up a Faraday cage which is standing here, and uh, we took uh, three probes of water. One probe was over there, this little glass, which is far away from the Faraday cage, and um, <clears throat> one is outside here, close to the Faraday cage, and one is inside the Faraday cage. And uh, this one is shielded now. When I close the cage, and now I do the same experiment as we did before, with a very strong mind concentration. I concentrate me on uh, these bottles yeah, of water and ask for a change in the structure of this water. And the test is whether also the inside bottle changes the structure. The test is whether this is shielded or not. And of course, this other bottle, which is so far away, should not change at all. And here now you see the result of the test. Again, you see the Faraday cage here, and the bottle outside, the bottle inside. And the first photograph to the left shows the reference water. You see, no structure at all. And the bottle outside the Faraday cage has already a structure in the center, but to our most surprise, the probe inside the Faraday cage has also a structure in the center. So this means this Faraday cage made from new metal was not able to sh shield my thoughts and uh, so the changes of the structure happen also inside the Faraday cage. It's very interesting to think about what this would mean for us as humans in future. Our worldview distinguishes between natural science and humanities, between the world of the measurable and the world of the unprovable motions. And these unprovable motions are also the feelings. And the world distinguishes uh, between the spirit and the matter, and the shape, the form, and the content of the shape and the form. So everything is built first out of a shape. And then finally, this shape is filled with matter. This we know from, from, from any creative process. An architecture person, an architect person builds a house, he builds it first by thoughts, by ideas, by his spirit, 
and then later on he makes drawings and then later on this house is built and the matter follows. But is this a law in nature that it happens so all the time? So let's test this. So what we did, we take salt water. We take drops of salt water. This was salt water from the Black Sea. And we observed something which we observe very often. So we observed that when the structure is built in the drying drop, first the shape is built, you have the form, and then later on when the drop dries further and further, then the shape starts to fill up with matter, more and more, and finally the shape is filled full up with matter. And this means, even in this creative process of making drops, which seem to be quite, quite simple and quite natural, nature follows this rule that it first makes the shape and then it makes the matter. And if we remember, far back, Lao Tzu in China said, within the form is matter, and above the form is spirit. And so basically he knew already about this rule, which we find now in the drops of water again. And so we have a long row from the, from the spirit to the idea. We have in our mind from the idea to the thought, and from the thought to the shape, and from the shape to the matter. So this means, thoughts make things. When we do our experiments every day, <coughs> we do first reference drops. This is drops made from a very stable water from South America. And these drops look every day the same. And this tells us that our lab is in order. Everything is all right. And we do about 40 of these drops. And um, we did this once again, and after about 20 of these drops, the door opened and somebody told the experimenter who did these drops uh, about a very sad uh, thing in his family. So a disaster happened, and the experimenter got a big shock, but he wouldn't like to tell this, and he suppressed this shock, uh, but his drops Onwards, all the drops he made later looked like this. And he came screaming to me and said, everything is gone now, I cannot make drops anymore. And so we learned from this that the experimenter is connected to the water in the, in the syringe. And if the experimenter changes his mood drastically, then the water in the syringe changes and the drops change. And what did you learn from this? Well, thoughts are things. It's very important what you think because you create your own environment. You are the architect of your life. You are the creator. And what do you learn? Well, I think uh for me it's very important that water has a memory and water does communicate. And uh, the oceans and the rivers are not the dividing elements of the worlds. They are just like a big database and store all the information in the water and store it and sometimes they forget something because water is also a mode of forgetting. And uh, so if we realize this, and we realize that for the things, then we can make of our world a very nice, very beautiful.